uh, Marshall Zelazenik conversation, talked to the uh, head of the UFC in the UK. We covered a lot of issues, and, and towards the end of the interview, we talked about UFC 99 because essentially he's uh, the international director because uh, he'll be in charge of moving things forward for UFC 99 in Germany. Started off the conversation saying, pretty good card. You got to be pretty thrilled with this one. Worked out pretty nicely. Yeah, no question about it. I, that's so dependent on how those fights go. But, you know, the way these fights ended up, obviously there were a lot of finishes. So, uh, you know, we're really aggressive about what we can get into the uh, TV broadcast. So, um, yeah, it turned out that the fighters did their part and the uh, producers were able to do their part. Tell me why you thought it was an excellent card. You know, I thought what it was is you had a little bit of everything. It was what we talked about um, recently. It was, you know, when you looked at the card, the, the marquee main event wasn't there. Um, but, you know, top to bottom, the card was so balanced. And um, what you had was every fighter had something um, at stake in this fight, whether it was moving up, you know, further to a title shot or whether it was to ensure that they continued to fight for the UFC. They all felt it. And so... You know, they delivered, I was saying at the post-fight press conference, that these guys delivered. And it was something to behold in that um, when it looked like a guy was hurt, he came back. I mean, it was at every turn, these guys just gave it their all. And, um, you know, I just take my hat off to them. I mean, the guys were great. I was, I got the chills, you know, as I was at the post-fight. So, and I'm getting them now talking about it. It was a great night. Marshall Zelaznik from uh, UFC is with us. He uh, runs things over in the U.K. Uh, just had an event in London, UFC 95, which I'm sure did very well. What was the, uh, what was the gate and the attendance? So we had, um, I don't remember the exact uh, numbers, but it was over 13,000 in attendance, and uh, the gate was over a million, which is you know, a little lower for us than London, but uh, we ended up structuring the uh, ticket sales in a different way than we would um, for some events, but um, it was a big success all in all. Good deal. All right, good storylines in this one. I heard a lot of people saying, hey, this Dan Hardy, how can he be the co-main event? Why is he the lead-in on a borderline pay-per-view card, a spike card? What the heck? And, uh, well, it turns out that... You got the, the best show possible for Dan Hardy. He's a Brit, so he did it in front of his fans, and he delivered a thunderous victory. Yeah, and at the uh, post-fight, you know, what made him really excited was, you know, the, the fans here know him, and he's gotten a lot of coverage here, and there was a lot of heat around that fight. Uh, but what he said at the post-fight was that he was just really excited that the American fans will get to see him. It's really important to these guys to um, get exposed as the sport generally. I don't think they like being perceived as a British fighter. You know, they're MMA fighters, and so for them to get that exposure means everything. And, yeah, him being, you know, second at the top of the bill, you know, I remember talking to Joe about it saying, yeah, is this the right call? He goes, look, this kid can fight. I apologize for the language, but uh, I've had a Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> Your inner Dana is coming out, although uh, you're not going to set the record because uh, Dana, I think, dropped, I think I counted seven on his video blog when he uh, said these uh, M blankers uh, don't appreciate this card. Go out and show them, you know, what UFC 95 is all about. And uh, they did. So you're, you're allowed to slip every once in a while, Marshall. That's fine. I'm, I'm channeling him right now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I think people have to realize, too, that we shouldn't be so insular here where we're always concerned about American, 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 and that there is a bigger picture out there. You do want to have some of the international fighters do well, especially on their home soil, and continue to grow this thing worldwide. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's really important. I, I was saying that, you know, Dana, you know, does so much work. You know, we in the U.K., you know, are doing our bit. Everyone in the U.S. does their bit. And the fighters are doing their bit. The media is doing their bit. We're building a sport you know, together, you know, this isn't um, something that, you know, we're doing on our own, you know, the heavy lifting is being done, uh, but everyone together is making this a sport. So when you have these international fighters come about, it helps to, you know, proselytize in some way, you know, we're out there and these are the guys that are, you know, uh, preaching the gospel. And so every time they fight and fans come to see them and they see them perform and they see the kind of characters and guys they are, you know, you can't help but be swept up in that momentum. So this is all good for us and it's good for the sport. So um, it was a very, very good day. Did Dan Hardy call out Joe Calzaghe after the fight? <laughs> I think he and Joe are going to have a battle until they meet each other one day. Um, yeah, he um, didn't call Joe. In fact, he was at the post fight. He had been asked about uh, Marcus Davis and whether he was prepared to fight him, and um, he took it pretty easy. And then at the end, basically said, "Yeah, but I'm prepared to stomp him or something yeah, like there that." You go. So. He he took the bait. Calzaghe didn't show up as one of the celebrities. What celebrities do show up for these kind of fights? Well, we had um, someone from Duran Duran whose name I've forgotten, Simon Lebon and his wife. We had, um, I hope I, I won't get in trouble for saying this, but Winston Churchill's grandson. Very nice. Who's actually a very interesting guy. Um, there was, um, who's Terry Adams' um, 
Uh, Danielle Lloyd, a beautiful um, um, celebrity here. Hello. So, um, and we had a couple of footballers, and um, it's getting there. It's starting to feel a little bit, you know, it's not quite where they are at Vegas, but um, we're starting to attract some of the celebrities. All right, the other part of defending the UFC 95 card, and, you know, it's funny how it works out because I heard lots of people say, uh, Koshek, I mean, he's going to fight this Paulo Tiago. Who the frig is this guy? And then look what happened. Yeah, that was um, quite a shock for everybody, and that's what made this card so great because you had that upset, and he was winning that fight up until the time that um you know he got his bell rung but um i don't know for me i I think watching that fight and uh, watching koshek and the crowd react to him um it was exciting because we had him out here uh god a year or two ago at a a conference and the crowd really loved him but they seem to have turned at some point between then and now uh but yeah seeing him get um knocked out i know he wasn't happy with the stoppage but um you know we all talked about it here and it looked to be the right stoppage these guys need to be protected in there but he'll come back well speaking of that did you think there were some quick stoppages because it looked like there were uh, several fights i i personally and maybe it's because i picked stefan struve to win the fight against dos santos but i thought that was a little quick Uh, any reaction from the crowd or from the media uh, on the stoppages well, they um, they seem to not be happy with the Koscheck stoppage because he reacted strongly uh, that he was ready to go. Uh, we sat around. I was with Ratner, and we were with some of the uh, referees here, and we talked about it. And we thought these were some of the – I don't know. We didn't have any issues with any of the stoppages that we talked about, and we thought they were all right on. But the one that the crowd did react to was the Koscheck stoppage. All right. Uh, Marshall Zelaznik is with us, uh, head of uh, the UFC in the U.K. Uh, in the end, do you remember what the fighter awards were? Uh, yeah, it was 40000 um was the payoff, and it was uh, Paulo Tiago for knockout. Uh, submission was Damian Maya, and fight of the night was uh, uh, Joe Daddy and um, Sanchez. Interesting, because you know what? Yeah, I, yeah. I had actually predicted one of the best fights of the night, and I was uh, rooting for it to get on the main card. It was going to be the first fight, and that was Kelly and Mandalones. It wasn't the most competitive fight, but it was a, a damn good fight. Yeah, yeah, we liked that one. Up until the end, I was with uh, Joe, you know, between fights going, what's it going to be? You know, what do you think? And we were looking at the Kelly fight as um, sort of the front runner, and then the uh, main event came, and those guys just gave it for three rounds. We thought, uh, you know, there was a lot of thought given to maybe you um, you honor both of them, but, you know, um, you know, Dana and Lorenzo are generous, and these guys, you know, get these bonuses post-fight, um, irrespective, even if they are announced as the uh, winners, so... Um, yeah, there was a good night, and there, were, there was a lot of fights. That you know, there were knockouts, there were submissions, there were a lot of um, bonuses to be had. But you know, we can only took so many. Yep, and I got to tell you, Paul Kelly was a good story because you know I kind of ripped him after the Marcus Davis fight, and even before, I'm thinking that hey, he's kind of a a hack on the ground. He did a good job on the ground, and the other thing you can see with him and Terry Edom, the growth, especially out of Kelly with Wolf Slayer and some of the American trainers coming in now, guys like Quentin Jackson working with him. I, I thought I thought he looked really good. He looks really good, yeah. His ability to get – I always – you know, you watch the English fighters, and as soon as it goes to the ground, you know, Bisping's fond of saying it's the um, English fighters' kryptonite, you know, when you try and <laughs> wrestle them. Uh, but you see these guys get off the mat, and you think, all right, you know, they're, they're starting to learn their sport. And, you know, Terry um, Edom went back to the States and, um, and spent some time there to wrestle. There's no real um, pedigree with that out here. Yeah, so seeing those guys perform, and, you know, Terry Adam to me, he's you know one of these guys, I keep calling him the uh, Michael Hearns of M, or the um, um, Thomas Hearns of MMA. You know, yep. he's got that long, and he's rangy, and he's so slick. So what would you make of Sanchez and Stevenson? What do you think of the fight? I loved it. Um, you know, I was uh, texting with uh, some people, you know, between rounds you get texts from them, and um, people around the octagon or around the arena, and what – what was fascinating about that fight, and you can tell when you're close up, is how much these guys are putting into every um, motion. So, and certainly in the punches and the kicks, there were no range finders in that fight. These guys just gave every punch had bad intentions, um, and you can feel that when you're sitting at the octagon side. You can hear them grunting and delivering it. Uh, and, you know, those guys would have easily gone two more. You know, Joe, at the end of the uh, fight, was saying, I want a rematch here. He kept telling us, make this happen. I want to come back here and do this again. Um, he felt like he was starting to gain some momentum as that fight went on. How did two, uh, the two fighters look after the fight? Because sometimes it's deceiving. You don't see, like you said, you have to be cage side to kind of feel how you know, loud the thuds are. At times it looked like there were a lot of punches missing, but I'm guessing that uh, both of them probably looked pretty bruised up a couple of, uh, you know, say a half an hour later. 
They did, yeah. You know, they came into the conference afterwards. You know, they they did all their testing and they come in and they've got hats and glasses on. You know, so you know it was a rough night. Uh, but you know, these guys, I, I'm always amazed at how good they will look. And then as the night wears on, you know, we're here at the um, hotel and some of the guys are down here. And as the night wears on, those bruises start to show, the swelling starts to begin.